radio station Forgive me, but takmo melgo tora merigel. Baby, at that takmo melgo tora be laoling di. Ul dagal sal lungi la tel pronunciation nga. Baby, at that mga dagal sal sal sabagal mga atroil ak melgo eh. So please bear with me. Good morning to everybody, and uh, especially good morning to the traditional leaders and uh, also uh, government leaders and especially those people that are suffering with the addiction of not only meth, but also any kind of addiction, gambling, alcohol, uh, you name it. Uh, if, uh, if you're going through addiction and you're suffering and it's already uh, having a big impact in your life, please uh, take time to listen to what we have to, to share because today I have my brothers with me I got uh, Manny Adelbay. How many times have I been here talking about, uh, about me and him going out to the schools and to the public? Now, finally, we're here. We're all here together. And we also got Kaipo Ayungan and also Bequin Ol, who's our uh, guitarist and singer. And also a new member, <laughs> Larry Irago. He's from the St. Choir, uh, St. Joseph Choir. We're very, we're very blessed to, uh, to come today because uh, it's, it's all about awareness, right? You know, awareness yeah. and also giving hope. Yeah. I mean, this is not something that uh, we should just put aside and hope that uh, the hospitals and the doctors and the whoever will take care of it, but it's everybody. Us as a community, us as brothers right here and sisters, us as uh, a, uh, society and the nation itself. Because it takes everybody to do, to help one another. And that also is something that uh, uh, me and Kaipo and Manny, before we started this, we were talking about sharing awareness. And not only that, but also talking about God, about Jesus Christ being in our lives. So right now, oh, I forgot another very important person. Uh, Brother Steve, he's also, he's going to be sharing uh, his testimony. So before we always start our program, we always start with a prayer. And so we're going to leave it to Brother Steve to, to share his testimony and give us a prayer before we start, okay? Ali, I'm Brother Steve May. Tay Wid, you here on Palau Wave Radio with the Journey of Life Choices program hosted by my good friend and Brother Jacob Yango Mao, speaking in today's program about God's enduring love for everybody. And if you were listening to Palau Wave on Sundays when my message is played at 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 6 p.m., you would have heard the message, Jesus Rescues Us, it is the message about Jesus meeting the woman at the well. And even though it's very likely she had quite a sordid past, you know, to say the least, Jesus accepted her as she was, you know. And she came and she met with Jesus, and the people thought it was a well where they would just get a, a normal drink of water. But actually, Jesus was going there to give her a drink of everlasting water, life that flows forever, everlasting life, and Jesus accepted her as she was. And my friends, I just pray during this program that we will understand today God's enduring love for us, that we might understand just just a, a little bit, just a little bit, a little taste of this great love that God has for us, how he accepts us as we are, where we're at, okay, no matter our sordid past, the things that we've done, Jesus accepts us as we are. And then he brings this life-giving water that changes us all over, this refreshing water pouring his love into our hearts that we might know the right way to live, that we might not be stuck in this self-destructive lifestyle. And so with that, I have a testimony to share with you in an opening prayer. The testimony uh, happened uh, in, in my own family uh, with addictions, but it's one that I have not shared uh, before, I don't believe, here on Palau Wave. And 
That is, after my parents were married in, in the church in Bailao, I actually married in the Sacred Heart Church there, <laughs> my mother Marissa Taywid, my father Steve Sr., and my father was serving in the Navy, so they went, um, after getting married in the church in Karor, uh, went back to Guam to live. And But unfortunately, uh, addiction did hit our household. This is before, well before, uh, this story is before my sister and I were, were born, but um, addiction hit our household and and my father um, loved my father and, and and God changed his life he ended up going into a rehabilitation program uh, after took 20 years uh, 20 years later but he ended up going into a rehabilitation program and God delivered him he received this enduring love that God had for him but the problem that he had when he was in his addiction was he thought and in fact he even told me once he said you know, I'm I'm not worthy of God's love. Uh, you know, God's love is for people people like your mother. You know, people that are love the Lord and praying to the Lord. You know, God's love is for people like your love people like your your mother, not for me. He actually told me that once. Well, anyway, when they were in Guam, he had um, got caught up in his addiction. He was very ashamed. It was a stormy night. And so he went to the highest, he drove his car, and he went to the highest place he could find in Guam. He went to the highest place, and he parked the car, there was nobody else around, right? And he starts crying out to the Lord. He's saying out to the Lord, he said, just stop loving me and let me go. Just, just let me go, just stop loving me. I'm not worthy of this. I've just done terrible things, just stop loving me and just let me go. You know, drunk, raining, gets back into the car, goes back home. You know, it was shortly after that that he, he left the Navy, and my parents moved to the States, went to church for the for the first time, and when, when they went to church, uh, they were singing some songs in the church, and the minister who was leading the service, he stopped the singing and at one point, and he said, God has a message for one of you, here before we go any farther and then he called out my father and he said to him God says to you I will never stop loving you I will never let you go I will never stop loving you I will never let you go. I just want to share here on Palau Wave Radio, that was the beginning of a change in my father's life. Because it tells us in the Bible that God loves us with a love that he never lets us go. And he felt so unworthy. But here's the promise for you and the promise for me as I wrap up the story and give us an opening prayer. It says in John chapter 10, in verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. And he heard Jesus' voice speaking through that minister that morning. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They shall never die. And no one can snatch them away from me. What my Father has given me is greater than everything. And no one can snatch them away from my Father's care I and the Father are one. And then he tells us a little bit later, John says, and God is love. <laughs> he that lives in union with God, God lives with him. And there is nothing that can take us out of our hands. Sometimes in the addictions, we feel that we're unworthy, that you know it's only other people that are worthy of God's love. Diak. I just want you to know that God is saying to you, whatever circumstance you're coming from, he will never stop loving you. He will never let you go. And I pray that that truth penetrates your heart on the program here today. I'm going to offer an opening prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I'm asking a blessing upon this Journey of Life Choices program hosted by my brother, Jacob Yang O'Mile. God, bless everything that's said. God, guide the words. And God, may these words uh, penetrate our very hearts, penetrate our very lives, that we might know, God, out into the world, there are such self-destructive things, God. And some of them have touched our lives. Self-destructive things. And God, we make stupid choices. We all do. 
But God, just like that woman at the well, just like my father who cried out to you on a on a hilltop on a rainy night in Guam, God, you hear us. God, you know us. God, you accept us as we are. And God, you love us. And you want us to know the truth of your enduring love for us, that your life will, that your that the life you live through your son Jesus will change us, and that you'll pour your love into our hearts and give us the power, Lord, the power to live lives where we're set free, lives where we have blessing, lives where we can be made strong in you and strong in your word. God, you have a better plan for us. May we know that truth here on Palau Wave Radio. This morning is my prayer. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And now I turn it over to my brother, Jacob Yang Mao, And may the Lord bless you and your friends and our friends here in the rest of this program here on Palau Wave is my prayer. Thank you very much. Amen, amen, amen. What do you, what do you guys think about it? It's, that's a powerful testimony that Brother Steve just uh, shared. Well... We're going to also make it, we're going to bless this, uh, this program again with uh, our brother over here, Beck Quinn, and Larry. So please give us some time to, to uh, share this song with you guys. Opening song, a very familiar song. It's called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I hope you guys all enjoy and be blessed. But for those who are driving on the road, please do enjoy and have fun. But then always keep the, your eyes onto the road. Yes, I hope for everybody that is out there listening, those that are suffering right now, or they're having a very dark uh, cloud over their, or uh, over their head, or, or they feel the weight of the world on them. Please know that there's always hope, and this is the whole reason why we we're here this morning and every payday weekend, uh, payday Thursday, is to give give hope and also share a little bit. So. Uh, there's another person who's here that I really want to, for people to hear his story. His name is Manny Adelby. He he really has a very powerful testimony that he's going to share with us a little bit. Then we're going to sing some more for for all of us. So Manny, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, oh, thank Jacob, you. to come and uh, 
and share a little bit uh, about my testimony. And um, I kind of want to just uh, start out with um, this song. I just It just so happens, like, the song that you picked was just okay. so awesome. It's just, I mean, the second verse, it, it just really touches me, and it really speaks to my addiction as well. It says, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. When I was singing that, I was just like, man, that is so, like, it's so pertinent to, to, to addictions and just um, how we deal with stuff. Um, before, I didn't, um, um, well, I guess a little bit. I, I grew up uh, atheist. I grew up um, atheist agnostic. I had no, um, no, des- no I, I, I never prayed. I had no desire to know God. I, had, I, I just didn't see that as anything that was uh, useful to me. And so the concept of, uh, of talking to someone that I cannot see, that I have to imagine is there, it was just like, am I fooling myself? You know, is this, um, am I just, uh, just making, making the, like imaginary yeah, just people making- to talk to, making up an imaginary God? And so I just said, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to deal with that, just throw all that in the water. The only, t- the only person that I can depend on is myself, and uh, that's the only, the only uh, when, I, when I turn, that's the only person that I can turn to for help is me, because no one else is going to help me, and I live in this world that is um, uh, just messed up. A messed up world with, uh, with no, no real God, and if there is a God, it's Satan, because there's so much evil in this world. I mean, how can there be a good God? How can he say he's good and loving when there's, every day on the news, I see, like, people being murdered and, uh, like, rapes and everything, all this bad stuff that's happening. How can a good God, you know, allow that to happen? And so why, and then this God is supposed to be not even there? Like, I have to, I can't see him. I just have to believe that he's there, and I don't see anything in this world that, that is evidence of it. And so um, to, to come from that sort of point to where I am now, where I can really say, yeah, this is the key. Take it to the Lord in prayer. It's kind of a very, very far, like, it's like 180 degrees. Like, completely, yeah. Yeah, com- completely different. And so, um, yeah, like, to be honest, I didn't really know. I thought I was coming to the show and just like oh just hanging out with the boys and then we can talk but then they're like oh no you're gonna be speaking I'm like what (laughs) but um yeah so but when when it comes to this like the opening song I was just like Beck when you really hit this you really hit the hit the spot today on this song because it's just like because it's it's it really is like this whole thing is like everything take everything to God in prayer and before like before I used to have so much uh, turmoil in my life and I had nobody to turn to. And uh, sometimes I would turn to people who I thought were like, um, like uh, wise or whatever. And, and, um, but it just seemed like every time I would say something and I, I would like um, confide in somebody, they really couldn't help me. Mm. All they could do was sympathize with me. They didn't have the power to change anything that was in my life. And the thing, what I have learned in my life is that the reason why I take everything to God in prayer is because He is the only one that is in control of everything that I'm not in control of. Like the God of the universe, He created all things and He makes all the systems in this universe work. Like everything is sustained by Him, all the worlds, every single person's lives is sustained by Him, and He directs, He can direct and move nations. And so, I mean, like that was one of the very first things I learned about when I became became a Christian was like the, the whole story of like Daniel chapter 2 and how God put out the whole um, history of the world from the time of Daniel until the coming of Jesus Christ which hasn't happened. All that history was laid out in front of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and it has happened exactly as he said it until now. So for the past 3,000 years or so, 4,000, I, I forget, 3,000 years or so, everything that, that God said would happen, happened in that order. The, the, the succession of nations and, and, of, and of kings, all the rulers of the world, I mean, these are world-ruling powers, and they, like, they happened just like he said it would. I mean, there were even times in history, like, you take Adolf Hitler, how he said he was going to establish a kingdom, he was going to unite all of Europe, and it was, his kingdom would last a thousand years. 
his kingdom would last a thousand years. And like, um, he, this is Adolf Hitler, and he's trying to conquer Europe and unite Europe. And it's, it says very plainly in Daniel chapter 2, it's like, you know, like Europe will not be, be united again once it falls apart. Like, and they will mingle the seed of man together, but they will not cling to each other, just as mud doesn't cling to, uh, to iron. I mean, that, that sort of thing where he says Europe will not be um, connected, that sort of thing, he directed nations, and nations were trying to overcome this, and of course that didn't happen. And so the, the point of what I'm saying is that God is in charge of everything in this world, and he's the one who has the power to affect anything in my life. And so when... Uh, just from, from all the evidence that I've studied like concerning the Bible and concerning God, he's the only one that I can take everything to God in prayer, and he's the only one that has the power to affect anything in my life. Yes, very, very much so. He's um, one, I, I could give like a one instance of how he, he moved nations. He moved the presence of nations. That's, that's one of the ones that really. Oh, okay. Every time you tell me about, you talk about it. It really. <laughs> so like, uh, like this is one example of how God can move move nations to to affect things that happen in my life. For instance, in 2012, I graduated um, in Taiwan with the bachelor's of uh, mechanical engineering and I came back to Palau and I wanted to go back and get my bachelor's or get my master's in business ever since I came back in 2012 and I had been trying and trying I tried the first year I applied to all these schools and like I thought I'd get the scholarships and I was turned down the second year I did the same thing the third year I did the same thing and each year I was turned down and like what I was I was just like why why can't I get into this why can't why isn't anything coming into play in the fourth year, um, like before I had even even tried to uh, to apply for all these scholarships and everything, um, my CEO calls me up and says, "Hey, you want to go to Japan to get your master's in mechanical engineering or whatever?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I want to go, but I want to get in business." And he was like, "Business? Why business? You're a mechanical engineer. You need to go for mechanical engineering." And I was just like, "Well, I'll apply, but I'm going to apply for business." And so. What, what was the scholarship? This was the Pacific Lead Scholarship. And so the Pacific Lead Scholarship came as a result of Palm 7. What was Palm 7? Palm 7 was where all the Pacific Island nations gathered with the Minister Abe and was re were requesting things of him. And what they requested was a very specific scholarship to go to people, young leaders in, in, the, in this, uh, the developing states who, um, who had very, like, like this scholarship, Pacific Leads, it was like Pacific Leaders Education Assistance Development um, Scholarship. And so pretty much what the scholarship was catered to was people who had four years of work experience, a bachelor's four years of work experience, a bachelor's degree, and they were the the, the minister or the or the CEO of that company was willing to give them educational leave so that they go can go back, can go to school. Get their get their master's degree and come back and be reinstated in the same company, mm -hmm. and or the same ministry, and so it was a very specific scholarship at that time in PPUC. I think I was the only one that was qualified for that because by that time I had just completed four years, four years of work ago. experience, right? <laughs> and so I had spent the first first three years and the and the last the fourth year trying to get a scholarship and it just wasn't working. And then in the fourth year. Like, right as I finished that scholarship, that scholarship came out. And how, how did that happen? The, the president of Palau, the presidents of all the Pacific Island nations, they came and they met with Minister Abe, and they asked for this specific scholarship. And so, for me, like, um, like when, when I went to go uh, apply for the scholarship, there was only two people who applied for that scholarship, <laughs> me and Shirley Koshiba at that time. Yeah. And guess how many spots were open for us? Two. two. So I mean there was only two <laughs> applicants and there was two spots for us out in out of out of the there was like forty participants in that in that um in that batch and they were they were like all kinds of different sizes given given to different people. Like I remember in Fiji they had like twenty um people that came in, but the applicants for that scholarship were five thousand. So there was 5,000 people who applied in Fiji and only 20 got it. So they really got the cream of the crop for, for that, for that uh, Fiji um, requirement. But for, for 
Palau, they were, we were given two slots and we had two applicants. And so it was kind of like, the way I saw it is just like, this scholarship was tailor-made for me. Like, right when it happened, right when I, when I, when I qualified to get that scholarship, God just moved the nations of the South Pacific to develop the scholarship from, from Japan. And so for me, that's a very clear, um, clear instance of, uh, of God moving in my life and moving in the lives of people and God being in control of those things which I'm not in control of. And the reason why I say this is that um, when God, uh, where God leads us, he equips us for success. Mm. Where he is leading you, he will not lead you um, to a cliff and then throw you off and not catch you. <laughs> he may lead you to a cliff and you may have to step off, but, but he will catch you and he will take you where you, you cannot um, imagine. And so, like, um, the, the, the crazy part about that is that that scholarship was to get a master's in business administration. And previous to that, I had, um, I had won a scholarship to go to Taiwan to get an engineering um, degree. And that is, that's a whole nother, like, just a set of circumstances where it's obvious it was God that was, that was doing that yeah. because, I mean, there's no way that I could have made the board of the uh, Palau National Scholarship Board give me the, the opportunity to go to Taiwan and to get my scholarship and to get my engineering degree. But so I got my engineering degree and I, from the skills from engineering, I came back and I started working at PPUC. Very early in my PPUC career, I realized that I needed business skills. So this is what happened. In the first year at PPUC, I was put on a project, a $350,000 project, where like we were rehabilitating, rehabilitating the tanks. And like we had to first assess the tanks at Imali. What happened that time is um, because of the way that I was administering the project, I, I ended up costing that project a change order of 10%. That was a 10% of that was like $35,000, and that was, I ended up costing the people of Palau $35,000 on that one, on that mistake for that project. And that, that was more than I made in like a year. That was more than my annual salary, and so I was kind of, it really weighed heavily on, on me. And that's when I realized I need to go to, I need to go and get my business degree and learn how to administer these sort of projects. And so that was the first year, and so then I started applying for the master's in business, and then the second year, the, the second phase came in, and it was like close to 900,000, but then the, the 900,000 project, I was able to administer, I was able to help, and I didn't cost the, the, <laughs> the, the project another 10%, because that 10% is a lot more than the 35, That's 90, right? That's 90,000, and so, so I was just like, wow, like, but even administering that second phase of that project, I was just like, there's so much uh, stuff that, that I need to know about how to, how to handle contracts and how to handle projects and business. So then I just kept, uh, kept applying, and then finally in the fourth year, they gave me the scholarship to go and, and like, to learn the business stuff in Japan. And so when I was in Japan, my whole focus of all my business studies was to figure out how to make PPC work better. Okay. And so, and like, uh, like I, thought the, I thought the problem was in power generation, because I was in power generation, and I was like, oh, we need to get these engines to run even better and more efficient and everything. But when I, when I went and I assessed PPC after going through a year of the business stuff and how to like look at, look at the companies and how to assess, like, um, just how to assess companies and their financial plans and their, and st their strategic direction, what I realized is that the problem wasn't in generation, it was in distribution and transmission. Like we had really, really old stuff, and so, like the so after that, like I spent the le the next year trying to really figure out what what um, I could do to help PPUC as far on the business side, and then I graduated with a master's in business, and I came back to uh, PPUC, and now I'm working in projects, and like uh, I'm working under Anthony, and it's 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 an amazing team there, but like. <clears throat> That's how, that, like, where God leads us, he equips us for success because first he gave me the engineering skills. He gave me a bachelor's in engineering so that I can take those engineering skills and bring them back to Palau and help the people of Palau. And now he's given me the business skills so I can couple those with the engineering skills so that I can help the people of Palau when I'm working on projects. And now the project that we're working on, it's like, it's like tens of millions of dollars that we're, like, this is a solar IPP project. And I feel like... Um, the, the skills that he has given me has a, 
that he has allowed me to acquire and uh, given me the opportunity to get allows me to administer that project to the best of my ability for the people of Palau. Okay. And that's the whole point. I'm not, he didn't give me these skills so that I can help myself and mm -hmm. to, um, like he gave me these skills so I can help the people of Palau. And that's how I feel like that's what he's doing and that's how he's working on my life. And he can move nations to do it. And so I just wanted to come and share that little bit with you guys. <laughs> and just to, just to say that um, if we, allow God, if we put God first in our lives, he will affect everything and he will take care of us. And so I guess the verse that comes to mind is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with the, um, and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Okay. And so it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Like if we acknowledge him in all our ways, he will direct our paths. It's the same thing as saying where God leads us, God equips us for success. And so it's the same message, and it's not a message that I made up. It's, a, it's actually a biblical message. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, man. That's a very, <laughs> very direct, very specific uh, ways. So pretty much uh, let me uh, kind of uh, explain why Manny, I brought Manny over here, because one thing is where he was before, during high school and stuff, he was, uh, you know, like you were – we were in the same trouble, right? We 180, like black and white. But then you found your way to where you now you, you got your master's. And uh, it's something that uh, I hope that we'll be able to be out there in public and to be able to share. Because I really believe that his message and where he went through, what he went through, is something that will uh, encourage the kids on looking at uh, what your future can hold if you really put your trust in God and also not only that but also work on it yourself because we can sit here uh, okay, mm -hmm. Larry, Quinn, Manny we can sit here and we can raise all the awareness as we can mm -hmm. talk about God talk about uh, about not using talk about uh, praying for others we, that we can do but again, like what we always say is that it's up to that individual to really take up that, uh, that responsibility for himself or herself. So we're going to continue to uh, uh, give some, give, sing songs and also uh, leave it to Larry right now or Beckwin. Which one of you guys? Larry? Okay, so we're going to sing one more song and I'm going to share a little bit. Gotta keep this uh, rhythm going, you know? Oh, I know this one. I think, yes, I, Sado, I think I know this song. You might know it too.
agrau e darawa tarangi ruba kenga Thank you very much, Bequin and Larry. Thank you very much. It's uh, this is the point where we're here is because we always uh, we always want to give hope because I remember my times when I was into ice and also not only ice uh, but also depression. You know, uh, I felt like uh, every day was a very gloomy day. Like I didn't really have uh, the energy or or like the the like you know it's it's really hard so now that i'm i'm not saying that it's my days are perfect uh, but with with god like me praying and me me really spending time with friends that are really into reading the bible into sharing and also doing uh community work and helping one another it really brightens up my days so that i know how, how it feels to be not in a good, good, uh, so if you're out there and you're really, you know, not feeling good, or please know that we really care, and there's people that really do care about you. We might not be next to you, but we really do want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you, and you depend on him, oh, he will, he will move nations, he will move, he will move everything just to make sure that you will get out of that hole. I mean, he didn't send God. Uh, God didn't send Jesus Christ to come to, to earth and, and just die for no reason. I mean, he died on the cross for our sin. And before, I never, I never really understood that. But now, as every day, I understand that. With him, through Jesus Christ, oh, we will go to where, where life, the everlasting life where he himself he says through me you get to God <laughs> to my father so if you do not know me <laughs> it's going to be very hard to understand my father so and uh, I really hope that you guys you know help one another I'll talk to one another just be nice and love I know it's it's something type of we all yeah. we always say that uh, these are the things that it's typical to say but is it uh, 
Yeah. What do you think about it? No, I think you're right, uh, Jacob. Thank you very much for inviting me also to come. <laughs> and join. I'm just uh, as thing? much uh, very excited to be here as well. And I just wanted to also uh, take a minute and uh, praise God for this opportunity, this beautiful day. And also praise God for everybody sitting here today. Um, this is a message that we want to share with Gaul Smer, Gaul Makitarum, Gaul Kora depressed. Um, you who are mourning, you who are happy, you who are excited, you who are living your life today as if there's no tomorrow, and you who are thinking, El Wase, you don't have a purpose in this life. Uh, we're just here to share with you that you're not alone. And, um, oh yeah, once again, my name is Kai Porayul. I am an addict as well. And let me tell you what I'm addicted to. I'm addicted to myself. <laughs> so let me, this is something that I, I need to really put it out there so everybody what will understand. Oh, you, yeah, so when you think of say you're addicted to something, you're not really addicted to something, more like you're just addicted to yourself. And all this time, I really depended on alcohol. It was not because I was addicted to alcohol. Mm -hmm. It was because I was addicted to my self-will and my self-righteousness and my selfishness. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's whatever you want. It's whatever I want. Whatever it was me want. addicted to yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, That's now what understand. led me to think I'm on top of the world when I'm not. Mm. Yeah. So um, right now I'm here today to just let everybody know that uh, uh, you're not alone. The sun shines on all of us. And it's your responsibility and mine as well as just what Manny and Jacob and Larry and Beckwin are doing today. And you, Sadoi, you're, we're sharing that yes, sunshine that we received from, the, from, the, from our garden. So I am a reflection of that sunlight. So... Who am I to sit here and say, well, I say, I receive the sunlight and then I'm going to give out darkness. Who am I to say, well, I say, I receive God's love and then I'm going to give out hate. Who am I to say, well, I say, I receive whatever and then I'm going to hold it for myself because I love myself and myself only. That's what I'm here to share with everybody is that I'm not addicted to myself. And you feel the same, if you feel the same way as I do, then I'm going to tell you that you only live once eh, and you only die once. Whatever happens in between are choices. You make choices to either be the darkness or be the light. Mm. So today, us here, we're here to just say, tell you, Luase, you're really not alone. Whoever you are, it's, you have a choice today. We chose to come here and share. We're sharing what we believe is the light that was given to us. Your choice now is whether to share or to keep it to yourself and be addicted to yourself like me. Um, Sulam. <laughs> That was very specific. <laughs> okay. Okay, wow. Uh, thank you very much, Kaipo. You know, Swal Sadoi, Swal Lois, Ramel, I don't work at young. Ramama Agimara school, I got classrooms, you know. He saw Mamel Mo, Melotiral, Nalget. The moment they ate, the moment they ate, a cantil I got. Makitel Gar, I got Makitel Makitel Omru, like a behavior. What's behavior? Makitel Lagarad. And Dagal Sal, the Mal, the focus or Tilal Makitel Toendi, the Mal on top, I got like choices, like telling Gal Manning or Tang, no, Maria choice in more school and Taiwan scholarship and end up in mol bachelor's degree el mutel me oriora ppuc el mutel ol ngetra dios e ngara ngara mom rule ngigera abelau that tool scholarship and more specific and more morning I wondering I'm morning and the film Russia well I'm a master's degree and maybe below so I give more shirt down at the more trial students a game I'm rolling it a school for principal school for sensei and I got school raw mid-senti palau high 
STA, Air Mouse. Ang email ang ito ko, Mule. Please, if anything, contact ka ma'am. Ang email, mara school yu eh. Mara, eh, hold a... Ang email, we prefer classrooms. Dagi, we don't want to come to tell Rahul Leng. When there's too many of them put together, they won't really get the message and they're going to be umdas na umilil mga na. So, so ma'am and ma'am, Really talk to them and give them hope because one of the ways to really defeat this uh, this drug meth. I mean, I'm I'm back to meth because I that's something I know that I was into. One way to defeat it is to stop the demand. And how do we stop the demand? Is by helping those that are addicted to it and also talking to our young young kids and educating them on what this 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 drug is all about. How it can ruin your family? How can it ruin not only your family but individually, like as a person? Wangara, like kamom dash. That's other. Kospea. What what do they put in these drugs? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure there are chemicals that are that will burn your skin and everything. Been trying to imagine you're inhaling this into your body. I'm pretty sure my body is all messed up. Like I cannot really. My lungs are messed up because I used it for five years. Thank God I got out of it. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing, sp spreading the awareness and everything. So uh, I see it's almost, uh, almost that time for us as others. So uh, before anything, uh, I want to do a shout out real quick to Tiral veterans. You know, I uh, promised one of, my, one of my newfound brothers, Rox. <laughs> uh, I, I promised him that I would make a shout out because uh, one thing is, me as a veteran too, I went to war twice. For I was in the U.S. Army. I went to war twice. I know the feeling of, of how, how this PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. I can feel it. I, even talking about it. Mm. It ruins it. it PTSD. If you if, if it's not cured or it's well, it's not handled properly. It can ruin families. It can really because we get addicted to alcohol. I'm pretty sure my, uh, my thing was uh, alcoholism and drugs. So I want to make a shout out to all the veterans who are, who are here in Palau. Hey, you're not alone. If you're going through some hardship, know that there's a, there's a meeting every Wednesday. Tell Summer House, then tell the hospital. Six o'clock. Ra kapsi sa ngay, elmo eight. Eh, akma lang encourage kami, veterans, my family, raga veterans. Please, akambom join. Eh, alsung mong sabi mo lolling na, like you can help with the program to to the support group to become better. Please go over there, cause we really need one another, cause there's no VA here in Palau. So, with all the information and with all the numbers that we will we will get. We will make sure that our leaders will make sure that we get help, okay? So if you're a veteran, man, woman, you're a family member, man or woman, child, and you really wanna, you're going through some stuff and you wanna help, please go over to uh, the hospital on Wednesday, every Wednesday, six o'clock to eight o'clock, okay? It's, it doesn't hurt to just cruise by and be, be with uh, one of the, your brothers and sisters, okay? So that's my message to the veterans. And uh, now we're going to pretty much, we're going to start closing down. And uh, Beckwin is going to sing another song for us. It's a material other learning setup program. And then just to, as myself, I don't really know how to speak uh, in terms of being on a talk show. But then uh, I can do something far more people can understand by heart rather than by ears, just sing. And this song is, um, I think God really, really did touch me yesterday because I just learned this song yesterday. And, and it really, just hearing the lyrics applies to both Manny, uh, Jacob, and uh, also for Capo. Uh, Capo. And <laughs> I don't know, I mean, one out of, one out of uh, 56 songs, and this one just so happened to be there. So I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, please do so, and be blessed. Be blessed. And it's called, Yes, I Know.
Jesus Jesus blood can make you free for he saved the worst among you when he saved the all wretch like me and I know Yes, I know oh, Jesus' blood can make the vile sinner clean And I know Yes, I know oh, Jesus' blood can make the vile sinner clean To the faith he giveth power through the mountains makes a way findeth water in the desert turns the night to golden day and I know Yes, I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean And I know Yes, I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean In temptation he is near thee, holds the powers of hell at bay, guides you to the path of safety, gives you grace for every day, and I know. The violent sinner clean And I know Yes, I know Jesus' blood can make The violent sinner clean Jesus' blood can make The violent sinner clean Jesus' blood can make The violent sinner You. Wow! <laughs> very, very, very. Okay, I guess. Okay. Kabul caller. Malungil to tau. Yak mara loreng sa tel program ay mungi rabi balia ay mara mungi larong ukol. Wasya Dios sa amara los sa baklet. Ak mungi rab Psalm ninety one real alto tau. Orang serap program memeral lundang seradio sendiri diri al Jacob menteri alu bangkir el al tu tau makmu oiwi absal nairiwan rawan el mulu terafor mulu masengi at atai toler tiang asedio selosab akler nigel mora rubak kiri el osab akla menigel kira eungel la osab akler la ola barik krisi asab el el mulu Kawa osab osab aklek ekla karangek kawa dios serangak aku meral ulsir serakau aku mul tergok lel mukut maklau mandiaga magasakla raigel berrot dal heltakudal maigel rogui ilda madarni herakta modo kata kau ra osab gel magamu salba akla el ngara aula karawil Abla kareng arangi yamo ko karangaw esob aklaw. Makmaral mareng asule la Dios silang maral waise adulto ira Dios entiaga entiaga sabiel. Matirgero ko yung lamo experience ra 
Aring arak klang arat tiral kira laga gizel makni tal rak seramur teras selabur belau. Meral di bolnga osengir el bolan dios e bolu meral wasia dios a osab akhir. Mo mangar tir al sukum tukonge open rarandir el wasi rubak dios rubak Yesus open rai diri ngarang kengui kau murak klang arang. Memeral bolu makhluk tengah terabur belau matir kal. Mereka kerel ngal kal meral be, melbol roy dari gaji dan makit telkar. Kom meral masau lakti melmol melmelulu algiriu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kolo. Kom meral musulang. Ang di, oh, also I I wanna let you know something. It's so, so it's really it's really funny. I mean it's not it's a we say coincidence, right? Ang gora otamle, gora lagi mangarang klen. I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in coincidence. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, reason why I'm talking about this is because what she just read, Psalm 91, is exactly what I, w I brought my Bible here. <laughs> it's the exact one that I was going to read. How is that? That is, th there is no way that is a coincidence. There is no way that is luck. You know, it is our faith and it's showing us. Why should I give? I I can I can really share the like you guys don't I was there and I I relied on myself and nothing happened. When I asked God to be my protector, in the short amount of time, many things have happened. I made new friends. So I really ask and also with what the caller said. Even the people please. They're going to get hurt. They're going to hurt one another. So stop, please. Material, mas marubag, material, bulis, ma. I mean, every everybody here in Palau. There's only get only fourteen thousand other Palau. The rest are made up of of foreigners. Now, if we go at the rate of dying, get the other Palau die like some people pass away, and then drug dealers or drug users like yeah, drug dealers are. Keep contaminating the the new new kids that are coming up. How many of us Palawans are going to be productive? It's an important thing. Please uh, stop it. I give you a little stop. Okay. So I'm going to also Psalm 91. I'm going to share, and then we're going to uh, we're going to end this uh, thing, and until the next payday Thursday. It's going to be Psalm 91, 14 to 16. Yeah, so this is where she already said that if you accept God. Now, this is what God says. This is the Bible. It's not me saying it. It says, God says, I will save those who love me. And I will, pro uh, I will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. Wow. That's a very powerful statement. And God just doesn't just say things just for making, you know, he, he really loves us so much. He, leave, he loves you. He loves me. He loves my brothers over here, my sisters. Every single person deserves his love. So pray to God, and we're going to end this uh, uh, talk show with a prayer. Is that all right? Okay, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Without you, I mean, we cannot, we, we're not able, us brothers over here, we, we, we're not able to have the courage to, to come out and really speak out and share your love. Because with you, you give us courage, you give us strength, you give us love and also uh, wisdom. You know, I hope uh, <laughs> a lot of wisdom too, so that we can continue to, to do what you, you need us to do.
Lord, I ask you to bless those who are suffering right now uh, with addiction and also those who are uh, who has family members that are with addiction or a friend that is uh, going through. Please, Lord, give them courage to to keep on fighting this uh, this fight of uh, getting rid of uh, any addiction in their lives, whether gambling, gambling, whether uh, meth, whether uh, alcohol or anything uh, that you know that really ruins their relationship with one another. Lord, I ask you to bless our leaders, bless our pastors, everybody, and also the the people in the communities that are able to make make things happen for that community, so that as a whole, as a nation, we will become healthier and become stronger. So not only do we help one another over here, but we help others that are. Uh, off island and Lord please bless them to those that are, are suffering with meth and alcohol in the on the other countries US Guam Saipan uh, anywhere Hawaii Lord please bless them and I ask you to protect our family and even our families here with this we pray to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord amen, amen. amen. okay uh, before that uh, so I want to thank our our sponsor uh, Vice President, Minister of Justice, Reynold Oilo. Thank you very much for uh, sponsoring this and making us uh, able to, to spread some love and also awareness to the to people that want to hear and also people that will need this information in the near future. Thank you very much. Oh.